Street life. It's the only life I know. Y'all expected me to dance, you're sorely mistaken. Well, how the fuck I roll? My name is David Pfeiffer, guys. How y'all doing tonight? That's a pitiful ass shit. I said, how you doing tonight? Fuck, man. It's been a long day. Y'all not as young as I used to be. I get real tired after a long day's work. You know, I get home with my, my girl, she's so good to me. She's, you know, baby, I got this pussy ready for you. So we better go put it in the fridge. I'll get at it in the morning. I'm too tired to eat that shit tonight. It just is what it is, folks. Um, Uh, in case I didn't tell you guys, I'm going to be your token white boy for the evening. Um, for those of you who have never had a token white boy, let me explain how it work. Uh, I'm basically like a mobile hotspot for white privilege, okay? Um, you just put me in your passenger seat of your car and I project a force field of white privilege that will protect you from police harassing you, okay? Very proud to say it's 99.9% .9 effective, okay? Only time it's failed me was when I was riding with Cat Williams, okay? Nothing I could do could keep this motherfucker from getting pulled over, okay? And I tried everything. Everything? Everything. Uh, I mean that shit. Um, man, 2016. It happened. It went. Here we go. Uh, I turned 27 in 2016. Um, yeah, you don't have to apply. It's all good. See, the thing about turning 27, though, is it's like... Now I got about 12 months to prove that I'm an artistic success, you know what I mean? Before I, before I die, is what I mean. I'm talking about the 27 Club, you know? You know, Jimi Hendrix, you know, Janis Joplin, Amy Winehouse. But I, uh, I really got to step up my drug and alcohol game, you know what I mean? That's disgusting. Man. Baby steps. Woo! That hurt. I'm not gonna lie, that hurt. Uh, but I'll let you know something about me. Uh, recently got engaged, y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Got engaged to a beautiful black woman who I'm very lucky to be with. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm excited to be getting married. My parents are excited to see me get married. It's just, it's my grandpa. You know, I don't want to say he's racist, you know, but he used to say things to me as a kid. Like, I'm sure everybody's grandpa did. You know, he'd say, hey, David, just like they say, once you go black, you're dead to me. <laughs> you know, the strange thing about it was, you know, we started dating about January of the year. By March, he died of a heart attack. And nobody ever told him we were even dating. So I don't know if he just felt like a disturbance in the force. I don't know if he was just sitting in his recliner watching Fox News going, Someone call a doctor. My grandson's got... I imagine that's how it went. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, but then, you know, there's certain challenges associated with being a white man with a black woman, right? You know, very early on in a relationship, you got to confront the fact that, you know, deep down in your heart, you know, you know that your dick is not the biggest she's ever seen, right? <laughs> and it just it takes a little piece of you having to admit that, right? I, I just wish you'd humor me every once in a while, you know? I mean, the other night I said, maybe it's pretty big, right? She's like, ah! Depends on how you look at it. Uh, I said, ain't that some shit? You gotta lie to me like you love me? She said, baby, love is blind, but it can still feel around in the dark. I said, ain't that some shit? You know, when you ask me how the pussy tastes, do I hesitate? No. I say, that shit is sweeter than apple pie. If I could bottle it and drink it, I would. I don't say it tastes like weak old Thai food, all right? Because that'd be inconsiderate, y'all. I don't roll like that, okay? Oh, man, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's like, I want y'all to consider that it doesn't matter what color you are. At the end of the day, it's difficult for any man to establish credibility as a father to his children. Am I right? Any dads in the house know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so I want you to imagine in a couple of years, I'm going to have me a little mixed kid looking up at me. Being like, Daddy, you don't know the struggle. <laughs> Listen here, you little high yellow bastard. You don't know my struggle. You know what it's like being the only 
white man expected to dance at a black wedding? <laughs> Shit is terrifying, y'all. Look, I'm a white man, right? God gave me the world, but he took away my rhythm, okay? I mean, watching me dance is like watching Stephen Hawking try to shell a peanut, okay? It's like watching Michael J. Fox try to open a pickle jar, all right? Just makes you want to scream out, somebody help that man! It's awful, man. I'm glad you guys enjoy laughing at Parkinson's. It's really, it's really gonna make the evening go a lot faster. Um. <laughs> So, uh, let me think about what else has been interesting lately. Um, you know, my girl, she's real, you know, on the spectrum of black girls. She's very earthy, holistic, Erica Badu type of chick or whatever. So she's gotten me into some things that I never anticipated getting into. You know, about a week ago, I had my first coffee enema. I don't know if you guys have ever had one of those. If you think Dunkin' Donuts got shitty coffee, you don't want to try mine. <laughs> I guess you could say I use a French press, is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> you know, I remember I asked myself, well, what are you doing with the coffee? I don't know, well, you use it to, to kind of purge yourself of, you know, nasty parasites, you know, like Mormons. Um, but that's not the only thing that's going on. You know, at Christmas time, I went and uh, bought her this DNA test so she could figure out, you know, what tribe she came from in Africa, right? Really narrow it down so she could kind of know where she came from. And the thing was, on the website, you know, I spent a pretty penny on this motherfucker. I spent a couple hundred bucks on this fucking test, right? And on the website, it has this pretty box of this shiny thing. I think I'm gonna get this big little package. It's a little manila envelope with a cheek swab in it, right? And I'm like, man, I paid a lot of money for this shit. I better get something back real nice. I'm gonna be pissed if just an envelope with a piece of paper that says, you are black, right? <laughs> I did not get my money's worth on that shit, that's for sure. Fuck, oh, man. What else happened? Uh, you know, I used, to, uh, I used to box back in the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I used to, used to, used to tear it up. Uh, in fact, man, my first fight, man, I was one to remember. Uh, unfortunately, I don't because I got knocked out in the first round. Um, it was a really strange feeling, man. I go in for a straight right, he comes in with an overhand right, and just, I don't know, man, just hits the button, just. <laughs> out like a light. I woke up in the, uh, in the locker room, they're cutting my hand wraps off. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I got the fight going on. Like, put this shit back on my hands. I'm like, no, man, you lost. You got knocked out. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't remember that shit. I feel great. I'm well rested. It's the damn thing. I said, no, man. And, you know, the, it really hurt my pride. Probably the worst part of it, though, was they, they put the video of it up on YouTube and Facebook. And, man, if there's something you don't ever want to read, it's the comments on your own knockout video. I mean, when I say these motherfuckers were savage and ruthless, you don't even believe, man. First comment was somebody said, man, it looks like a night quilt commercial. Some other smart ass photoshot my face on top of Dorothy from Wizard of Oz when she fell asleep in the field, you know what I'm talking about? Probably the most hurtful one was just three simple little words, man. Cosby strikes again. Yeah, yeah, how do you think I feel, man? Fuck. Ah. That was tough, man. Tough shit. Um, Jesus, man. I've been all around the world. This inauguration was, uh, was interesting. I imagine, you know, there were probably a couple of different viewing parties. You know, they probably had some Hillary supporters jamming different soundtracks, you know. It's the end of the world as we know, you know, type of shit. I like to imagine though there was probably some like redneck dude with some like little half shirt barely pressing his nipples, right? Big old distended belly sitting behind like a drum set, listening to Phil Collins, just waiting for the drop. Just be like, you know, you can feel you can feel it in the night. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, like a lot of you guys, uh, I do have a day job. Uh, I sell insurance for a living. Uh, ghastly stuff, terrible, very boring, not fun. And the strange thing about it, man, is that it's like, um, you know, I, I have to find different ways to kind of break the ice to get people to open up and talk to me a little bit, you know. Uh, so one of the things I've found, one of the techniques I've started using uh, to do that is I say, hey, look, real quick, I'm going to shoot you this quick comparison quote. If it looks good, great. Not, we won't worry about it. What I found is you can use the same technique in your dating life. 
Like for example, let's say I walk into a bar and I meet a beautiful young woman. Like, man, what's your name? Huh? Trisha? That's a beautiful name, Trisha. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is David. Hey, look, Trisha, real quick. I got this dick, right? I'm trying to shoot it to you real quick. If it looks good, great. If not, we won't worry about it. How's that sound? <laughs> She's a little on the fence, guys. She's a little on the fence. And that's okay, Trish. I don't expect you to make a decision right away. We, we got to ask a few quick qualifying questions so we can figure out if this is going to be a good fit, right? Okay. So, Trisha, who is your current dick provider? <laughs> She's uninsured, y'all. Don't you know that's dangerous and downright illegal? Right? Oh my goodness. Because here's the thing, you know, you gotta understand, you can't just be buying it from any Tom, Dick, and Harry, right? Because he might tell you he's got 10 inches, he's probably got a 12-inch deductible, okay? That's called going backwards, Trish. You look like a kind of woman trying to go forwards in life, am I right? Right, because if it don't make dollars, y'all, it don't make sense. Now, Trisha, I, I, gotta, I gotta try to explain to how important this is. I want you to imagine, hypothetically, you're on your way home tonight, and God forbid, you get in an accident, somebody wrecks your pussy, okay? I mean, just rock this shit, y'all. I mean, they are calling the ambulance, I mean, they're pulling people out of there. It's a nightmare, right? We're gonna need a new one. Now, here's the thing, Trisha. This could kind of go one of two ways, right? You could have that cut rate insurance, right? They're gonna depreciate your pussy, okay? Now, Trisha, what year were you born? I'm gonna say maybe like uh, 83. Okay, there we go, okay. So Trisha's used to driving a 1983 Trisha pussy, okay? And it's in great condition, y'all. All right, no dents, no scratches. She changes the fluids, okay? But here's the thing, Trisha, they're not gonna give you enough for brand new 1983. They're only gonna give you enough for maybe like a 1937, all right? Now look, I don't know how many 1937 pussies y'all have seen, let alone had to drive. I'm gonna tell you right now, Trisha, shit ain't pretty. All right, but the news ain't all bad, okay? Because with Liberty Mutual, we're gonna insure you to full replacement value to get you back in a brand new 1930, well, 83, like it never even happened. And with our Better Pussy Replacement Program, we're gonna put you in one one model year newer with 15,000 less miles. Now, Trisha, I'm not a magician, but if I can take 15,000 miles off of it, I think I deserve a peek, don't you? <laughs> Everybody get up with Trisha. Everybody get a great score. My name is David Fife. It's been a fantastic crowd. Thank you so much.